Shivaya Om Namah 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 Shivaya Namaste Greetings from Sri Lanka Aya Bhuan Live long and prosper <laughs> so I'm um, here more or less in one piece. It was kind of a rough trip, but I made it. Now, the question that's been on my mind for the last few weeks is what the heck is going on with me? <laughs> Basically, if you haven't been following the channel, Shiva welcomed me in when I was in Rishikesh and invited me to basically merge with him. And it took a little while before I was ready. But then when I was back in the mountains a week or about 10 days ago, it happened. And, you know, like all of these amazing realizations, it's not about something I did. It was a blessing. It happened to me. It dropped out of the sky on me. I was just doing my sadhana, <laughs> according to Shiva Purana, as best I could, which is not perfectly, but, you know, Human beings aren't known for being perfect. <laughs> anyway, you know, it's hard to describe. Like back in 1984, when Shakti appeared to me, well, she didn't actually appear. I couldn't see her, but I sure could feel her. Her energy is very strong and gave me Shakti Pat. So just like that, and just like when I discovered my Ishta Devata, Narsingha, he appeared to me, but it was on the mental level. It wasn't anything physical. So the immediate problem that crops up with this is, how do I confirm it? How do I know it's not just a hallucination? Number one. And number two is, how do I convince others that this really happened? And uh, the credibility gap, you know? Uh, because there are so many people out there claiming to have this and that realization and enlightenment and blah de blah um, And they're doing it just for cheap fame and adoration and prestige and maybe even money. But uh, this is not something that, you know, manifests outwardly. It's completely subjective. Like any great spiritual realization. You know, it's not like I can suddenly leap tall buildings in a single bound or do anything else super duper except I am without anxiety. I am without desire. I am without suffering. Even though sometimes the body is under stress, like from traveling or just general old age, <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. I, meaning the indwelling consciousness, the self, 
And even more so, as I described in this, letter, this last video, there doesn't seem to be any difference now between what I feel as I and the self with a capital S. In fact, there is no more individual I. It's just gone. Because individual I is the source of all our problems. It's the source of our suffering. This individuation from the whole, which of course is Brahman. So how do I experience this or how do I confirm it to myself? The fact that I'm without anxiety, without desire, without any need to justify or prove to myself huh, that this is real because, you know, yeah, I'm here, it's my life, I know. But on the other hand, to help others to reach this goal, which is the goal of all the Upanishads, the goal of self-realization, They have to have some faith. They have to have some basis for accepting this. And of course, the problem is that anyone who has a relationship with an institution, a group, a sect, a cult, an organization, a religion, a, a disciplic succession, parampara, is not going to accept this. There's no way. Huh? Because they have an investment in proving that their little group is superior and probably the only way, the only real path. Which is a bunch of nonsense, okay? The Rig Veda begins with the statement, truth is one. But different sages call it by different names. So that's the problem here. If I say, well, I merged with Shiva, somebody from, you know, some group, like let's say Raman Ashramam, is going to say, well, Ramana never said that. <laughs> you know, or, you know, basically it boils down to you're not a member of our group, so you can't possibly be self-realized. You can't possibly be telling the truth about your subjective experience. You know, we don't see that you have any superpowers. You know, but who does? I'm not interested in cities. Cities are for kiddies. <laughs> They're a way to prove to oneself and others that you have some spiritual insight or some attainment or something. But the real attainment is no attainment at all. It's the end of trying to attain stuff because you're completely satisfied. You know, when someone becomes completely satisfied, <laughs> it doesn't make the headlines, does it? It's not drama. You know, you don't see the New York Times lead off with, you know, Dharmasar, sage in India, is completely satisfied. <laughs> it's not news. If anything, it's anti-news because there's no drama, there's no suffering involved, there's no ego. In fact, it's the opposite of ego, the loss of ego. The ego is finished. Now, there's only Shiva, there's only Brahman. 
Shiva and Shakti and their loving interplay and the creation of the universe, which is, you know, quite something. It's very beautiful, actually. Uh, we were just reading in, I think it's chapter 15 of the Srishti Khanda, that when Brahma is trying to make the creation, he feels stymied, you know, he feels like he can't do everything. It doesn't, doesn't turn out right, you know. He tries this and he tries that, but none of them are aspiring. None of the creations are aspirants for Atman, for the absolute truth. So, you know, even he tries to make these mental sons, the Kumaras and Narada, and they won't help him. They say, no, 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 we don't want to get mixed up in all that material stuff. <laughs> we just want to meditate. We're renounced. And so Brahma became so angry that Rudra manifested from his uh, avimukta, this spot between the, uh, the nose and the eyebrows right here. This is where, where people wear the bindu. So uh, Rudra, of course, is the destroyer of the universe. He is the one who takes apart all the work that Brahma does. So Brahma is saying to him, you please create the unenlightened beings who are afraid of birth and death. And Rudra says, no, I'm not going to do that. That's your job. <laughs> My job is to give them salvation. So Rudra being the manifestation of Shiva within the creation, he is the one who dispenses liberation, mukti, the various forms of mukti. So questions on my mind are like, what am I now? What category of existence am I in now? Am I one of Shiva's associates, Gana? I don't feel I can say I am Shiva himself. I don't have any special powers or anything. But I love Shiva. I love Shakti. I love my lion. <laughs> Not a singha. And I love the devotees of Shiva. And I'm always ready to serve them. Even they might not call themselves devotees of Shiva, but if they're devotees of the truth, then I love them and I want to do everything for them that I possibly can. And the best thing that I can do, because I'm simply a human being, is to disseminate this Vedic information, which is what I've been doing now for some time. I hope it's having an effect. I hope it's helping you. I hope it's encouraging you. And maybe that's the value of my story, my realization, whatever it is, um, that I performed the sadhana as described in the scriptures and I got a wonderful result. It's really simple. It's not that you try or do liberation, because you can't do. You can't do something that is beyond the range of the mind, beyond the ego, beyond the efforts of being a separate individual. It's not possible. You can't give yourself liberation. But you can approach Shiva and Shiva, when you're ripe, Tivra, when you're ready, Ati Tivra, huh? he'll do it. He knows. He knows. And, of course, we talked about the four states of consciousness and the realizations and such um, associated with them. 
So what it really means is moving from Jagrat to Svapna, from Svapna to Sushupti, and from Sushupti to Turiya. Then when the body goes, when the body is finished, one attains uh, Atituriya. See, this is the permanent release. I think right now I'm in a stage of provisional mukti. I'm not fully merged because I still have a connection with the body. But when the body is finished, then what is to hold me back? I think this is the reason why Shiva is surrounded, famously surrounded by ghosts and other kinds of beings like that, because he, he deals with these people who are separate from the body. He likes to deal with the self, not the body, and not the individual, not the mind. All that is, is something we have to transcend, something we have to overcome. You know, so how do we do that? Through sadhana. So you want to know how to attain these wonderful states? It's just do sadhana. Nose to the grindstone, head down. Huh? Don't worry about the goal. As long as you're aware of it, as long as you desire it, Shiva knows. And when it's time, he'll grant it and give you the complete enlightenment that you crave. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.